DE Dust 2 has been entertaining millions of gamers for over a decade, and has been remade countless times in every game imaginable. It is the quintessential layout for proper tactical shooters, and serves as a template for multiplayer level design. I've probably spent over a thousand hours of my life between its bright sandy walls, and know its corridors better than I know my own house. Let's investigate how Dust 2 became the most iconic multiplayer level in all of gaming. Greetings, I, the War Owl, greets you. Dust 2 has been removed from the active duty map pool. It's a map with a rich history. Counter-Strike developed alongside Dust 2, and back then, nobody really understood anything about competitive level design. It was the Wild West of design. It became a map that could be played both tactically and strategically, but also one that is accessible and beloved by everybody. Easy to learn, difficult to master. Dust 2 is a map that has the ability to keep people playing forever. Our journey takes us back to the party that was 1999, where Jesse Cliff and Min Lee were hard at work on a modification of Valve Software's award-winning, industry-changing hit game, Half-Life. The PC gaming market was in the middle of a golden age, one that would last into the early 2000s. Technological advancements and the accessibility of the internet gave developers the tools to experiment. The gaming industry wasn't the well-oiled, money-making machine it is today, where Call of Duty gets pumped out every year. In order to stand out, developers had to create something truly great and unique, and the established formulas for success that we have today just didn't exist. Valve Software was an early innovator in this golden age, and they believed strongly in cultivating innovation in newcomers to the craft. They allowed modifications of Half-Life, even providing some development tools to the world. Modding allowed enthusiasts who weren't necessarily professionals and didn't have the resources to create an entire game from scratch to create a game off of an existing title. What does any of this have to do with Dust 2? Cliff and Gooseman's modifications of Half-Life was something new, a tactical shooter based on the counter-terrorist operations, known as Counter-Strike. But you can't have a tactical shooter without maps. Enter stage left, Dave Johnston. Like everyone in the modding community, Johnston designed maps on the side as a hobby. Little did he know he was about to become an important part of gaming history. He was about to ruin billions of hours, yes, you could count it up, it's probably billions of hours of collective productivity. He was about to design a map for the new game mode called Bomb Defusal, denoted by DE. That map was called DE Dust. According to his blog post on the topic, which I highly recommend reading, Johnston claimed he flat out stole the concept for Dust from an early screenshot for Team Fortress 2. No, not that Team Fortress 2, this Team Fortress 2. Kinda makes you appreciate Valve time. Team Fortress 2 wouldn't be released for another eight years and would very obviously undergo major design changes. Nevertheless, Johnston instructed his texture artist to flat out rip the textures directly from the screenshot. Igor Stravinsky once said, lesser artists borrow, great artists steal, a saying he stole from T.S. Eliot. Dust was a major success. It was played as often as Dust 2 is played today. It was a simple design, it had bright textures, it had good visibility, it was a noob's paradise. And at that time, everybody was noobs. But as we all know, Dust isn't really a great layout for a competitive map. It's fundamentally flawed in that respect. Terrorists rush a single, narrow hallway, the only way into the bomb site, and the terrorists don't really have that many options to move around the map. There's no mid-game. Every round plays out nearly the same way. After the success of Dust, Johnston worked to create a spiritual successor to the map, one that is still played today in some form. D.E. Cobble. Um... Wait, what? And then after Cobblestone, in 2001, he began work on DE Dust 2. Like any map, Dust 2 underwent a beta process where the community would play and provide feedback to the mapper. It was designed to be a spiritual successor to Dust, with many key elements directly ripped from the original. Don't believe his humble tone. I don't think Johnson just stumbled into success with Dust 2. I think the design decisions he made are what made the map so popular. It has the simplicity and bright visuals of the original Dust, but it also has a much improved layout. The layout of Dust 2 is its greatest strength. 
It is what would become defined as the four square layout. Consider a two by two square grid, where the edges denote the passageways on the map. Now consider the layout of Dust 2. It almost perfectly follows this design, the only anomaly being short A connecting to the bomb site instead of into the side of long A. This layout gives both teams tactical options. The terrorists can use the middle passageways to rotate between the two bomb sites and find an opening and fake out their opponents, and the counter terrorists can rotate between them to try and be in the right position for when the terrorists decide to push. If either team sees an opening, they can push through to take a positional advantage, or end up in a firefight to determine who gets to keep that positional advantage. Because of this, no two rounds on Dust 2 play the same way. This is the greatest appeal of Counter-Strike itself. You have quick rounds to keep the player's attention, and every single round is unique, and affords each team decisions. Why is Dust 2 still played today? It never gets boring. It gets old, it gets overplayed, it grows mold, but it never gets boring. Other maps that have been inspired by this layout include Mirage and Cache. Just think about them, clearly inspired by Dust 2, but being designed for the more competitive side of the game. These two are arguably the best maps for competitive play. So how is Dust 2 so popular with both the competitive side of the game and with everybody else? It's the simplicity. The long, wide, open corridors allow for aim duels to dominate the gameplay. This was important in the original Counter-Strike, before smoke and flash physics were to improve to allow for more complex strategies. The map works so damn well in Deathmatch because everywhere on the map goes somewhere. There's a lack of cheap spots to hide in corners. There's a lack of dead ends. Pit is arguably the only dead end on the map. Even the spawn points are critical points on the map late into the round. Dust 2 also isn't completely bland. It has unique factors that separates it from every other competitive map, such as mid. Terrorists spawn with control of mid, looking right down the double doors, splitting the map in half. In just three seconds after spawning, you can have an engagement. It's almost immediate. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. We left off back in 2001. Dust 2 went on, because of the reasons mentioned previously, to become the most played map of all time. A large amount of dedicated servers became Dust 2 24-7. You can still find them today. Many Counter-Strike players solely played Dust 2, and since it came out over 15 years ago, no map has even come close to taking away its popularity. Thus, too, is the Franz Joseph Haydn of maps. It inspired the Mozarts and the Beethovens to follow, but established the classical style that they would expand upon. It was ported over to Counter-Strike Condition Zero with a pretty reskin. But let's not go to that game. It's a silly place. Well, I like that scout that you have there. I guess, I guess there's no friendly fire. Um, I do want to scout, though. That might be pretty useful. Dust 2 was then recreated in the Source engine by Valve Software for the new version of Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike Source. This version of the map improved upon many of the elements of the original. Mid was more accessible to the terrorists. Xbox was made to allow for faster rotates to short, and the Skybox was expanded to provide for more clever nade and smoke throws, given the new physics of the engine. The map was also ported to Counter-Strike Global Offensive as a release map. This version is a copy-paste of the Source version with updated visuals. It keeps the same timings and meeting points as the Source version, but looks absolutely stunning. The global offensive version has existed as a living map, seeing major changes every few months that for the most part have greatly improved the map. For example, there used to be annoying rafters inside of the B tunnels that's only purpose was to get in the way. Backdrops were changed and clutter removed to improve visibility at key areas of the map, and glitches were fixed thanks to the fantastic YouTube series called Exploit Hunters, which served to find and root out these problems. The map has only gotten better over time and adapted as Counter-Strike has. The undisputed top objective source for topness, WatchMojo.com, ranked Dust 2 as the best first-person shooter multiplayer map of all time. I disagree. You can't objectively say a map is the best, but it certainly is the most iconic. If a game allows for custom maps, there is a Dust 2 map. From StarCraft 2 to Mountain Blade Warband, there is a Dust 2 map. There are Dust 2 maps in real life. That brings us back to the present. Dust 2 has been removed 
from the active duty. It's possible that they're just working on a makeover for the map like they did with uh, Train or Nuke or uh, Inferno that has just been added back into the active duty. So we may see it again. I wouldn't think of Dust 2 as being benched. It has its own category now um, in the casual and the deathmatch game modes, maybe where it belongs. Um, so it's sort of been uh, elevated to where Dust 2 24-7 is an official game option. But I do want to pose the question, is this the first time ever that Dust 2 has not been part of the competitive Counter-Strike roster? Either way, Dust 2 will have a very special place in my mind. It's an imaginary arena where we go to do battle, and some of our greatest stories have taken place within its yellow walls. Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer. This is a terrible insult to the legacy of Dust 2. Woo! Get wrecked, noob!